I don't, I don't remember anything I read. Well, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> Today on Homes and Lifestyles Canada, Anna gives us a downsizing antidote. What you need to know on Possession Day with Jeff Kahane, APHIS Home Inspector, talks GFCIs. The panel today is all about the upside to downsizing. Also on, explore Carborn Park and check out a great home. Sponsored by Kahane Law and Hayworth. Welcome to Homes and Lifestyles Canada. I'm Kim Hayden, veteran agent and your host. Today we're talking about bringing home the baby to driving Miss Daisy. But first, let's take a look at the first home on our tour. Welcome, come on in. Hi, my name is Hannah Kazak with Real Estate Professionals, and I'm here to show you this wonderful new home in Mahogany, 74 Masters Point Southeast, currently listed at $780,000. Upon entering this beautiful home, you've got this wonderful space that can be used as an office, a den, flex area, or a formal dining room. Up ahead of us is the kitchen. Uh, the kitchen has got the upgraded cabinets throughout, right to the ceiling. You've got the upgraded appliance stainless steel package with the built-in stove and gas range. You've also got this oversized Quartz Island. It's perfect for entertaining and it's adjacent to the spacious great room located right behind me with wall-to-wall -wall windows providing a ton of light and a radiant heat fireplace. Welcome to the upstairs master bedroom. This is a great space to relax and unwind after a long day at work. The beautiful ensuite located right off the master bedroom with its encased glass and tiled shower, soaker tub, and his and hers quartz countertop sinks. And the last room on our tour is this wonderful bonus room. And as you can tell, this room is beautifully staged like the rest of this house by my friend Jocelyn with J. Louise Interiors, who is a true professional in the industry. Jocelyn, can you tell us what inspired you for the staging of this property? Yeah, thanks Hama. thank you so much. It was such a fun project to work on, obviously a beautiful property, um, but my job in this, in this project, because it was vacant, was to create a home. So that meant bringing in every single piece um, that we've seen throughout. Um, my job is, you know, to help the potential buyer visualize living here. So why is staging so important? Yeah. Um, well, a quick fact is uh, a staged home sells 72% faster than an unstaged home. Um, it also gives perceived value to that property so you can list it at a higher price. So not only are you selling faster, but you're selling for more money, which I think is everyone's goal. Well, thank you so yeah. much, Jocelyn, for making this space fun. beautiful. This 2600 three bedroom, two and a half bath, two story home located on a corner lot is listed at $780,000. If you have any questions about this property, please reach out to me directly or at hammockazak.com. More to come after our weekly design antidote with Anna Cummings. Hi, I'm Anna Cummings of ANA Interiors, and today I'm talking about how to downsize from a large home to a small one. The most important thing here is scale. You want to make sure you have the right sized furnishings for each room. First thing is to plan ahead. Use your floor plan to determine if your furniture will fit. If not, you'll want to look for key quality pieces that will offer multiple purposes, like a wall bed in an office or guest bedroom. Remember, ordering new furniture takes time, around six to eight weeks generally. Sure, you'll need to let go of a lot of stuff, so embrace this new beginning. See it as an opportunity to free yourself from the things that just won't work in your new home. It may help to get a professional opinion on how you can keep the items that reflect your personality and style and address the even more challenging issues like how are you going to cover that wall of windows you might not have had before? Bedrooms are much smaller in condos, yet they still need to fit the biggest piece of furniture we own, our bed. Make sure they do double duty and include a storage space underneath. Try for the biggest side tables you can find, making sure you can still walk around your bed and open closet doors. Condos will often have an open floor plan. Make sure your color palette is consistent as you'll be able to view all of your rooms at one time. Storage space is at a premium in smaller homes, so make sure you bring only what you find useful and beautiful. Once you have your floor plan with the right furniture, a design pro can help you fill in the little gaps. 
you'll be living with new routines and traditions, so the furnishings in your new space should reflect your new lifestyle as well. Are you thinking of downsizing? We'd love to hear your comments at AnnaInteriors.com. Join me next time when I'll be talking about how to outfit your vacation property. And we're back. So bringing home a baby can be overwhelming and so is the transitioning to your golden years. Here to discuss strategies for facing these changes are Jeff Kahane of Kahane Law, veteran real estate agent Doug Hayden, and Shelley Work Martin, provocative speaker, author, and business strategist. So Shelley, I gotta ask, provocative speaker. That I like that one. And what and tell me about what you have written. So I wrote a book about picket fences. It's all about our mindsets and how we build fences around ideals in our lives or what we should be doing, including when we should be moving to that new home, what that new home should look like. And sometimes, many times, we discount what we should be doing and we, we prejudge. Prejudge, there's a lot, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think prejudging's easier even to do now with social media. So it's easy to jump jump that. Absolutely. To those conclusions all the time. So let's start right from the beginning. A couple's getting ready to start a family. So Doug, what are some of the things that they should keep in mind when they're looking for their first property? Uh, first property, typically most folks looking for their first property, two things are primarily driving it. One is there's been some kind of a change or they're getting an idea that they want to settle down in a certain location, certain city, certain locale. The other one is uh, where are they financially? So. Usually if I've, I'm working with a first time buyer, the first thing I want to know, have they even talked to their banker, have they talked to a mortgage broker, have they gone through that process because until you know what they can afford, you don't know where they're going to land. Some people may have the idea that they want a backyard and all the rest of it, they might actually wind up in a townhome. Yeah, there's yeah. townhomes with backyards, so that's, yeah. that's a good thing too. So Jeff, from a legal point of view, what are some of the considerations uh, a young person just starting out, you know, just having a family, just getting a house, so those types of things? what should they take into consideration? Well, the obvious one is if they're buying a house, they're gonna need a lawyer. So that's where we come in uh, often on those. But also would be if they're gonna have a baby is the, the will, enduring power of attorney and personal directive, deciding who's going to look after your child if you can't look after or if you've gone. Who's gonna look after you if you can't make choices for yourself physically and financially, who's gonna deal with funds uh, if you aren't capable of doing that. So these really are um, the, the quintessential best example of an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure because they really, without them, you're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars and months and months at a time when the family's really emotionally upset already. So they, they really are important documents to look at. So ounce of prevention, absolutely. So Shelly, you've moved quite a bit throughout your life. You know, what are the recommendations you have for kind of that transition up, down, all around town, basically. You, you. Oh, wow! Probably out of the whole board, you're probably the most traveled. <laughs> yeah, I've moved to. Uh, I've lived in three provinces. I've lived in, uh, you know, Toronto, Calgary, Victoria, uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario. Rural, rural properties as well. I think just knowing why you're moving. Sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you're moving. Well, you do have a choice. Sometimes you're moving because it's a job opportunity, and it's like I'd be silly to turn that down, right? So we're going to do that. But knowing what that new community looks like, sometimes you have time, sometimes you don't have time. We moved with our children many, many times, and it, it was fun. We always were collected as a family together. That was really important. But knowing where you're going to spend your time. We sat in coffee shops and communities just to get a feel for a community, talk to locals. What's it like to live here? You know, who would you recommend for, for a realtor? Certainly when we moved here, we had enough experience to know we don't know if we're going to really like it here. So instead of <laughs> buying the big house, let's start with a small house because you can always flip that easier and move up than when you have the bigger house It sometimes takes a little longer to sell that bigger house. So, so we did that and, and I'm happy to say, you know, 17 years later, I'm still in the same community in Calgary, um, moved I think three times in that community um, because our family changed and probably going to move again at some point. Um, but yeah, just being aware of where you want to live and your house is your home. So make sure when you're picking that home, you're picking it for you. Um, you know, don't pick a house and say, well, in 10 years, I'm going to have the house of my dreams. I believe that the house of your dreams should be your everyday house that you're in today. And so what do you do, need to do to make that happen? 
now that the kids are grown mm -hmm. um, and and they've moved out and you're you've you've worked in a retirement you managed mm -hmm. a retirement center also mm -hmm. so you've seen that that next transition which mm -hmm. is time to move right? right again so what are some of the things that you can speak to from that what are some of the I guess getting I mom think, and dad to move right I think as families, we should be having those conversations every day. It's much easier to talk about doing a will and who gets what and where do you want to live if something should happen to you, especially my parents live in Ontario. If something happens to my parents, which did, I can't just move them to Alberta to a long-term care home. You can't do that. No. You, they have to be here a year, you have to be able to look after them for a year and then they can look at going into a long-term care home. Oh, so I, I think the main thing is to have those conversations every day when you're really not needing to make the decision. Because once mom or dad need to move to long-term care or to a retirement residence, it's really hard to have those conversations. It's much easier, it's like doing your will. It's much easier to do it and have a conversation when you don't need to act upon it today than it is to have somebody at the last minute having to find a lawyer, because they don't even have a lawyer yet that they know, and then try to figure out what's in it. I mean, we've recently redone our, our wills. We took our kids with us. Like, you're coming, because you're gonna hear what we want. And yes. it's just an everyday conversation. So I think when you're looking at your family and if you want to be involved in it, is have those tough conversations when it's easy. Well, you're just, I, I could write a book off of everything you're just <laughs> saying. Tough conversations. Hello, I'm Sean Burstein and my company is Design. Design provides professional staging services to assist in the marketing and sale of residential properties. Staging involves the placement of furniture and decor into a given space to help visually enhance its appearance. A well-staged property can add value and shorten the time it takes to sell that home. We're here today to provide a tip or two on some simple and easy ways to enhance the look of your home. Oftentimes we forget to complete a room setting by failing to address a lonely wall space and corner. It really doesn't take much effort to create an inviting and functional space. An occasional chair, some art, an end table, and a shelf unit with decor add life to an otherwise neglected area. Thanks for joining us. Looking for something different to do for date night? How about a shooting range cooking class combo? You can experience it right here at the Shooting Edge. So we're not your grandpa's gun store. The Shooting Edge has been a successful gun range, retailer and school in Calgary for 17 years. But owner J.R. Cox wanted to take it up a notch with an experience designed especially for couples. By doing that, we bring in a different demographic, right? expose them to the shooting sports in a very non-confrontational, very fun way. I mean, plus two is who doesn't like to eat. Parts of a gun. Magazine. The evening begins with instruction on how to shoot, then couples get to test their new knowledge with some major firepower. Well, date night, we try to make it, it's, it's a sampling, like it's not a full-blown experience like when somebody comes in here normally. We have a, a window, so besides the safety briefing, we've picked some firearms. So we try to keep it to a um, fairly gender neutral, so we mix a, a mixture of handguns, carbines, maybe put a shotgun in there, something makes loud boom. So they have a really good time, but they get a nice little sampling of everything, and then they go. So, so it's, again, it's experiential, but it's not complete. You know, we're kind of wet, wetting their appetite to come back and do it again. We could use green peppers, uh, we use red peppers, yellow peppers. I like to use a mix. Then it's out of the firing range into a fully equipped demonstration kitchen where Chef Gennaro Silvestri fires up a professional cooking demo. The nice thing with Chef Gennaro is he knows how to break it down, explain it, and make you laugh and get you involved so that you retain it and you can take it home. The package of two very different pastimes runs $300 per couple. Romantic or just friends? Date night takes place every second Saturday at the Shooting Edge with new menus every month. With your eCalgary update, I'm Tiffany Burns. Let's check in with one of Avis Home Inspectors. Hi, I'm Doug McDonald with Pillar to Post Home Inspections in Red Deer. I'm also a member of APHIS and have been inspecting homes for the past 22 years. I'm going to talk to you about ground fault circuit interrupters, more commonly referred to as GFCIs. They are a safety device found in breakers and receptacles that will trip 
the power if your electrical device comes into contact with water. GFCI protection is required for exteriors and bathroom receptacles, and since the mid-2000s, they're required in kitchens and any counter with a sink. The most common found devices in homes are receptacles with this test reset button like this one here. It's a good practice to test your GFCI devices every month to ensure they're working properly. And if it doesn't trip, uh, replacement is necessary for the protection of your family and yourself. I'm going to leave you with this. This is a picture of the week. It's a nasty electrical junction box. Jeff, speaking of that transition, so a lot of people, because baby boomers are hitting that age, and what are some things legally, from a legal standpoint, that we, our generation, needs to understand when, when taking over for our parents? Um, take over your parents. I think maybe it's a, even better to take a little step back because in okay. today's society we seem to have a lot of people who've got their starter marriage out of the way and move on to a blended family situation. Yes. And, and in those situations there's um, very particular legal things that come up in terms of agreements to protect each side and people doing what they think is right because it's easier um, but then having consequences where you know some kids are just left out and have no um, you know both both parties to a relationship have worked their whole lives to assemble whatever, in theory, in part for their kids, um, but the, the one set may get nothing if it's done improperly. So that's, that's a, a step back that I think people should really, it, it's one of those hard conversations because it's, you know, mine, yours, ours, and how that goes, but it, it's important. And there, and there are legal ways of making it run smoothly if you actually address them. So and probably a conversation after you have had Thanksgiving dinner, not before. Yes, <laughs> and one of those conversations is easier to do while things are going okay and you don't need to have them than mm -hmm. afterwards where it's, it's too late. Um, Excellent. Yeah, so, so going back in terms of you know, what do we do with um, the next generation as our generation, I, I'd say the biggest one, make sure you take them in. I mean, it, again, it's that will, but an enduring power of attorney. Enduring power of attorney lets you make uh, financial decisions for a parent um, a personal directive is one that lets you make medical decisions, but the, the um, enduring power of attorney lets you deal with their house, their bank accounts, their home, if they can't make those choices for themselves. And without it, you need to get guardianship orders, trusteeship orders, you've got to um, apply to the courts to be able to do that. And if you're in a situation where someone has to move because they can't uh, go up and down the stairs, they can't look after themselves, um, and they can't sign for themselves, then you are looking at months where you're having to support, pay for if there's a mortgage and upkeep the house. Um, you know, if there's no one in the house for a couple of days, you can lose your insurance. All these things um, to make sure that they're proper, properly looked after. Well, and then going back to uh, you mentioning the blended families, that would, if you're not being proactive, mm -hmm. then that could it can actually compound all that distress when it's time to address right. mom and dad coming. And, and the most the frequent issue is that people will go on title as joint tenants, mm -hmm. expecting that the other person will, that it just, you know, will wise, we're, we're splitting it between all the kids, but I guess there's two issues. One, if there's a change of relationship or change of mind, uh, a person can change their will without you ever knowing. And then on top of that, um, it, if it all goes to one person, then uh, nothing goes to the other person's uh, kids. So there's ways of setting up your, your real estate holdings, uh, even your principal residence, to make sure that what your intentions, whatever your intentions are, we're, it's not our job to tell people what their intentions should be, it's about what do you want, and we're going to make that happen. I bet you wanted to, though. Nah, whatever it is. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, Wait a really minute. Want. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Kahane with Kahane Law Office, and today I want to share some insights to having a happier real estate transaction. Possession day must knows. You're a new home buyer. You're an old home buyer who's done this a thousand times, but you're buying a new home. What do you need to know? Number one, walkthroughs. Check the whole house, make sure that everything's okay. Run all the appliances, make sure they're in good working order. If there's anything like a fireplace that's not working right, ask your real estate agent to ask the other real estate agent to ask the sellers. Maybe there's a little trick to making it work, but, and this is number two, if there's any issues, let your lawyer know ASAP because the seller is only responsible up to and including the possession day. After that, it's all on you. And if you wait a week, the seller can say, sorry, it must have broken when you've had possession of the property. Gonna move on. Number three, make sure that you have all the keys. 
fobs for condominium, garage door openers. Make sure that the keys work all the doors so you're not hunting down keys later from someone. Number four, don't have your moving truck right at noon. You want to make sure that even though the contract says you've got the noon possession, that you're not there right at noon paying movers to just sit around. And last, make sure that you change your locks. Without changing locks, you can have a stranger come into your home and that's not something that you want. Welcome to Carburn Park, 300 acre natural area just located off the Bow River in the southeast community of River Bend. This was once a part of Senator Patrick Burns's vast prairie empire and it was to become the site of the Burnco gravel pit in the mid 70s. The company had given a gravel extraction permit in exchange for the development of the park area. The two lagoons were the focal point of the landscape design and in 1986 Carburn Park was officially open to the public. The variety of aquatic inhabitants attract many species of birds and animals. It's a photographer's paradise for snapping shots of many deer that frequent the riverine forest of trees and shrubs. The Bow River Pathway runs through the park, linking to a network of walkways and hiking trails. Interpretive signs inform visitors about the preservation of wildlife habitat and the surrounding ecosystem. An abundance of picnic tables and barbecue sites sprinkled around the park provide families a great spot to enjoy an outdoor get-together. During the summer months, you can canoe in the lagoons or practice your catch and release fishing skills. And during the winter months, the lagoon becomes an amazing pleasure rink, open from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. But I'm off to channel my inner Elizabeth Manley. Considering this whole downsizing thing, um, how do you get mom and dad to move out of their house? I, I mean, I'm just looking at me. <laughs> I, okay, so I'm, I'm moving in from my big house with my three chafing dishes, two cats, and hopefully no kids, um, to a condo. And I'm just looking and going, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put all my chafing dishes. How do, you, how do you get somebody who is not quite ready to accept that move to accept that they need to move? Um, from a realtor perspective, I don't necessarily, that, that's not a conversation you typically get drawn into unless you're dealing with younger family members who might be trying to help out, you know, mom and dad. Um, when I come into a situation like that, typically there's been something going on up the food chain, if you will, and something's happened in that family. So either there's a death and somebody's still trying to hang on to a property that maybe they can't manage. Uh, or there's been a split of some kind. So they're asking for guidance in terms of, okay, my mom and dad are in this situation, that sort of thing. What I tend to run into more of, which is really interesting, there's, there's two trends that I see that, are, that are, are really becoming prevalent. One is uh, a lot of folks that are sort of, we'll call them empty nesters, right? Because that's what most people call them. So the empty nesters are, they're acting a lot younger than they used to. So like 60s, the new 50s, 70s, the new 55, whatever. Is 50 but, the new 40? I'm yeah, just saying. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Could be. Could be. Could be. So <laughs> these folks are looking for, for something that's not the big house. They don't want all the baggage and all the, the wear and tear and all the maintenance that goes with that. But they also want to go into a community where they're looking for more walkable, more restaurants, more of a vibe. So. Uh, East Village is doing really good in Calgary. Um, you know, we're looking at Seton as well as a place, right? Seton, a very dynamic center. And even the condo builders, when they go out to build these, they're expecting a demographic to come in. That demographic tends to be younger, yet what they're finding is they're getting a lot of empty nesters. So what I'm seeing is you're going to have these, you know, larger homes that are coming onto the market, which in a market they may not be prepared to handle that many large homes. In other words, the affordability of that. And you've got these folks looking to downsize into condos and more of a lifestyle community. Now, the other trend that's behind that is you're also seeing the uh, uh, move to larger homes, but it's multifamily. So you see maybe three generations in a larger home. So they're sort of taking care of that whole equation themselves as opposed to, you know, hey, let's go to the East Village and, you know, for the last uh, 20 years, we'll blow all the kids' money that they were supposed to get. 
<laughs> and, and we've been seeing that more and more also where parents and kids are buying those houses together yeah. and whether they're sweeted or not sweeted and, and it works for both of them. It looks, oh, oh, we got grandma and grandpa right there who can help look after the kids and then gets a little travel time and then, you know, the one's living on their own and it really, for certain families, it's, you know, when I first started in real estate, never would have seen that and now we see it, you know, not all the time, but it happens. Yeah. Can't Would you picture, like to speak to that, show? that Well, picture. I mean, so <laughs> you've lived that scenario. So we, we live that. We have four grandchildren that live in in the city, and we're we're lucky to have that. And they're very close. And you know, my one granddaughter, her dream is to one day grow up so that she can actually live at grandma's house. And I have told her you have to have more dreams because you can live at grandma's house at any time. But they spend a lot of time in our home, and so my husband and I, we have a, a fairly large home for the two of us. Um, but our four grandkids are there probably every week and they sleep over all the time. They have their rooms and it's, it's great. Everybody has their space and we love it. And, you know, we keep that house now because of the stage of life that they're all in. At one point, those grandkids are going to be busy having their own lives and they probably won't come over for sleepovers as much. Maybe they will. Like, who knows? But we're open to kind of just exploring, you know, what does that look like in, in 20 years' time when they're ready to become homeowners? Maybe they'll let my husband and I stay there and they'll take over the house. Now, at one point in time, you guys had a bungalow that mm -hmm. you didn't finish the basement because mm -hmm. it was ready for the, the one to move out. Right. So we're going into the condo trying to get all of ours out. Well, and then we can go into a bigger house, Doug, <laughs> so I get to keep my chafing. So dishes. we've always had an there exit strategy with our kids because we've always said, you know, once you become an adult, you are responsible for your own decisions in life. Nobody has ever interviewed me and asked me about my mom and dad. That's true. Right? So at That's some true. point, you become an adult and you're out of here, bless you, we'll support you, we love you. And so yes, when we bought our, our next home in life, it had two bedrooms and our, we had two children, um, and my husband and I, and when we moved in, my son said, wait a minute, where's my bedroom? And I said, we're on the exit strategy with you. We could set something up for you downstairs, but we're on exit strategy. And he bought his first home, um, I think he was 19 when he bought his first home. And because we said, you either pay rent or you buy a house, one or the other, make it work. And he did. Must have been pretty high rent. <laughs> so it was. It was. It was. It was very high rent. Equitable to buying a house. So look at buying a house. I would have rather done that than have him living in my basement forever, right? <laughs> so <laughs> hence the condo. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Thank you so much. What you yeah, just we were talking about the condos and we mm -hmm. talked about downsizing to condos. It's important before you make that transition to really understand yeah. what condo yeah. life is like yeah. and yeah. know what the rules are. Because for some people, this guy, um, <laughs> living with a whole bunch of rules would be really, really hard. And for some people, it's fine. But you know, what, whatever the case is, make do that research beforehand mm -hmm. so you know. You know, if I can't put out my favorite garden gnome. Am I going to be okay living here? <laughs> or is that a deal breaker? If, if I have to pay fifty dollars every time there's a drop of oil because someone's going to go looking for it on, on the the parkade, am I going to be okay with that? So really, like, take your time to make sure you've got the right place. And if you're in that transition, you don't really want to look after your house. Pay your own condo fees, and you can get a gardener to come in and you know, whatever you have, to have driveway cleared. You can get that outsourced. Um, but if, if they just understand that, so it's not a I bad would, thing. It's not a judgment. So do you have any closing words? Is that from the condo? Those are my closing words. Those are your closing Those words. Those are my closing words. Doug, do you have any closing words? Very good closing words. Take your time no matter what you're doing, especially if you're downsizing, because you're probably only going to get one chance at it. Good call. Closing words? I think closing words are be aware. We all start out as young, first-time home builders. If we're fortunate enough, we get to be, you know, long married or happily um, living couples or with other people. We have children. We have grandchildren. Um, have those conversations as part of your everyday life. Don't wait for them to happen when you need to be having them with the lawyer or with the realtor because there's a crisis in your home. Awesome, thank you. Shot on location at Hayworth. Hair and makeup by Swizzle Stick Salon Spa. Wardrobe by SB Experience. A big thank you to our sponsors and supporters, a, a Interiors, Hayworth, Kahane Law, Canada Mortgage Direct, AFIS, and design.